and the edge are starting to be uh, integrated and edge today, edge computing being especially a hot topic. And so this, call, this, uh, this talk is titled Integration of Edge and Cloud IoT Platforms. So we want to examine what's happening in the cloud, but what is also happening in the edge and how we can potentially unify this edge for cloud continuum when we are building IoT solutions. My name is Draško Draškovic. I come with a lot of background in building IoT system and, and especially a long time involvement in open source community. And uh, I started this project um, about five years ago, the project I will mention today, and together with a group of uh, uh, enthusiasts and, and, and uh, open source experts, built a, a platform that uh, today is in, in wide use all over the world. And uh, today with me is Janko, Janko Isidorovic. He is a co-founder of uh, Mainflux company, a company that was built on the top of this project. And also very important for this talk, his background is, uh, is in, in edge computing and he's been a chairman of one big Linux Foundations project called EdgeX uh, Foundry. He's been sitting in uh, technical steering committee and he's been chairing application work group. So a few words about Mainflux project. It's an open source project that is Apache 2 licensed, completely uh, patent free uh, open source IoT platform. And it has been growing steadily and uh, with over 30 uh, contributors contributing uh, to it often, it's very live project, it's very active. And some choices were made when we started building this IoT cloud. It's written in Go programming language, which gives us uh, certain features that turn out to be important also on the edge. Uh, Mainflux is deployable in Docker, and through Kubernetes it can be scaled out, can be maintained, orchestrated, and it is used today in, in production in the industry. On the top of this open source project, a company was built, a startup that offers professional services simply because when you build an open source project, you're looking for a business model and then there, is a, there are a lot of companies that are addressing you, they start using uh, the software. And so basically, in order to have a, 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 a continuous support to the open source project, a company called Mainflux Labs to, today exists and uh, building, it's building solution on the top of the Mainflux, but it's also maintaining together with the, with the community the, the core of the project. Uh, and now with this uh, introduction in place, I would like first to address the cloud portion of the IoT middleware and the way that we are building, in general, the IoT solutions. And then I will leave the floor to Janko so that he drills down into edge part of what has been done with DEGEX Foundry project. And then we'll talk again about the integrations of those uh, edge solutions and the cloud solutions. So what, the cloud architecture uh, can be seen as a few blocks that are always repeating when in building IoT platforms. And modern software, modern software is often architectured with, uh, with microservices in mind in order to get this modularity and scalability, fault tolerance, and so on. And what's interesting, I'm using Mainflux as an example, just a, a typical IoT platform. But uh, what we did is, as I mentioned, that we used Go programming language whenever we could and uh, basically structured it around one project that is called GoKit, which gives us a, a, a domain-driven design 
all over the, the imp implementation of each microservice. So this has a nice consequence that actually the microservices themselves are very small and very tight. They, they, they can be a few megabytes maybe in size. So it's good for the cloud because you, you easily distribute those microservices not necessarily only with Docker's, but Go builds a statically compiled binary that you just take it, put it on some other server, run it, and, and it runs, right? The, 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 everything is compiled into the binary. And uh, this is a nice consequence also has that you can actually deploy the same code on, for example, IoT Gateway. You don't have to change any single line and have the same code base that runs on the uh, in the cloud and on the gateway. And this is like uh, the ultimate destination where we are going, at least with this project, is building a unified IoT platform that can spread all around, the, uh, all around this uh, continuum from the edge, from the modest gateway that can have uh, maybe a, a few, few megs of RAM. So we've, we've easily run the whole solution on the Raspberry Pi type of computer. And also, the same solution, we scale it out to hundreds of machines in the cloud, geographically distributed. But to go back to the, to the architectural blocks is that usually there are some clients which are actually the things, and those things are, are, are connecting through some security, through some proxy, via different protocols uh, to the back end of the system, and then Usually you have some device management, right? And then uh, the, there, there is a plethora of pro what we call protocol adapters. The point is that uh, the things, what we call them, the, the, the things, the clients part of the IoT uh, are different devices, right? And those different devices speak different protocols. And those protocols in IoT are uh, mostly unusual for a typical cloud solution. So you. You have, for example, MQTT protocol or constrained applications pro protocol. And those protocols are uh, a bit specific. Some are pure TCP, like MQTT. Co-op, on the other hand, is UDP. So it, it demands a DTLS as an uh, a encryption mechanism and so on. So you need to have those protocol adapters in order to simply connect all this variety of different things. And then you would probably like to pump these messages to all your applications in the back end uh, somewhere in the cloud. And what we did also is that we added a, a one service that is called nor Normalizer so that we can actually uh, nor process those streams uh, as they come. And this is like a big, big picture of what uh, one cloud infrastructure might look like. And you can see a different blocks here. Like there is, there, there, there are of course clients on the on the input. Sorry, I'll just go back. It's clients on the input, but there are there is a part which can be a proxy, security, authorization, user management, device management, and so on. One big part is of course me uh, messaging part. Is this is where you accept all those connections from different uh, devices and then sending those messages internally in the system. Uh, you have a storage part where you want to store those, those messages that, that are pumped from the devices. And finally, maybe you would like to, to visualize the, con the content and, of course, uh, uh, any decent uh, industrial platform must have a logging instrumentation, metrics, and so on. So to go deeper and to, to see how this all works together, how it is interconnected in the cloud. Here we see that those same blocks like clients connected to a proxy like that has a security, different security mechanism that you can apply. Once the device is authenticated, it then sends a message to one of the protocols. Let's say it's an MQTT device. It's going to the NUTS, which is extremely performant message broker. It's a cloud native uh, message broker. And then it sends it to a different applications, 
different consumers or write it in a database and so on. And these, all these here are the microservices that we implemented. So they are there. They are in the, in the Mayflux core. They are already available in the repository. But, but uh, I, I put in a different colors here, as you can see, the blocks that are, that are related to the device management, the block that is related to the messaging, the, the data persistence or the storage block and so on, so that you can see those patterns appearing in an IoT middleware. And in the ideal case, what we want to do is take the same, the same, this same architecture, the, the same blocks, and try to put them on the edge, try to uh, distribute them or, or just send them as, as is, in the ideal case, on the edge gateway. Because if we succeed to do this, then we don't have to change any line of code. We don't have to change the APIs. The engineers who are used to these kind of platforms would understand it easily and, and operate it on, on, on any computer, whether it's a, a, a very complex cluster in the cloud or it's just a simple uh, IoT gateway, right? So, Going into the deeper into details, as I mentioned, what what are the the users? Let's let's uh, take a look at this uh, at this part here. So these 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 microservices, which is mostly user and device management. The users are uh, the owners, maybe of the devices or the admins of the system or the builders of the solution, and basically they go through this very standard procedure of through the REST APIs of creation, the entities, and uh, supplying credentials, and so on. But things are more in interesting, like they are actual devices, and then um, those devices must be as well represented somehow into database so that you can, as some entities, so you can manage them, uh, give them specific uh, attributes, and so on. And one interesting thing with the, with the Mainflux uh, IoT platform with, with, with this cloud is that for messaging, we, in order to simplify it and to make it uh, very abstract and practically abstract away all those protocols, we, uh, we uh, it's not invented, but introduced some, uh, a notion of channels. So, so channel is basically very similar to a topic on a broker, let's say a topic on an MQTT broker. But it's, but it's uh, parallelized for any of the in incoming protocols so that you can actually use this channel and make two different devices communicate between them. They post on the same channel through completely different protocols so that you can subscribe on, on MQTT, for example, protocol, and then send some messages via HTTP, and you will get those messages on the on the device and basically with this we completely abstract away the protocols and simplify the creation of the uh, applications and and the firmware on the devices a very interesting part is definitely security and uh, iot platforms are uh, coming with different implementation of the security primitives uh, one of the typical that we've saw so, so, so far in the uh, open source software, in open source IoT platforms were certificate, uh, authentication, authorization via uh, some tokens, some uh, credential that, that a thing have. And a uh, very nice example of very high uh, uh, security is something that typically Amazon uh, AWS IoT had. And they, what they did is they introduced a mutual TLS uh, for authentication and authorization of the devices. Uh, so we started you know, going through the different IoT platforms that are out there today to find a similar implementation. And when we could not find it, we implemented we implemented it in Mainflux, so I think that it's uh, the Mainflux today is uh, pretty unique in in that sense that it implements a mutual TLS 
uh, for the device connections. And basically what it means is that you, you create a certificate for the device is a client-side certificate, and then authenticate the device via this certificate so that every device practically has a different certificate that never leaves the device hardware chip, for example, but only the public certificate is sent to the, to the cloud, to Mainflux in the cloud, which authenticates the, the, the device via, uh, via MTLS, so practically on a transport layer, and establishes uh, en uh, TLS encryption. So in order to do this for different protocols, we had to introduce some tricks, or rather specifications. Uh, where should we keep some information about the device itself, where should, in which field of the certificate we should put this one? And uh, this is all well documented uh, on the in the, on the project documentation. But it's uh, nevertheless it's it, it's it's a building block that we are very proud of today because it introduced really a, an industrial level of security into into this open source platform. Uh, but as I mentioned, the, the 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 platform itself like an Building an IoT middleware, it's not only about messaging. It's, there is a lot of things to do about uh, device handling, but also those uh, difficult infrastructural plumbings. Like, uh, and when I talk about this, I'm, I mean mostly about DevOps, right? How do you deploy platform? How do you maintain it? What do you log? How do you log? And so on. So all the stuff that, are, that you need in order to have a, a reliably running cloud platform today, right? And so uh, Mainflux itself uh, implements uh, by design, through the domain-driven design I mentioned, and through those features that Go and GoKit offer us, uh, structured logging, it provides all the metrics, and we are capable to, today to push those metrics into Prometheus, for example, or, or pump the logs through a Fluentd into the Elasticsearch and then visualize them with Kibana. But one other very interesting thing is so-called so event sourcing. is basically that whenever some event happens, device connects or disconnects or uh, sends a message or something like this, uh, you would like to inform the other microservices that this event happened. And we use uh, for this uh, a, a new Redis streams. So Redis 5.0 recently introduced so-called Redis streams, which is a, a log-based uh, uh, broker or storage that, that you can use for this kind of integrations. Very useful and, and, and already present in this uh, in this implementation. So, so this, this was the cloud portion, so that you have you know, like a, an idea of what we are talking today when we say an IoT cloud or IoT um, uh, middleware. And I'll let Janko now uh, focus on the edge. So uh, as Rasko said, uh, you are perfectly capable of running Mainflux on the edge. But you might find that at this point, Mainflux does not have support for all the protocols that you need, like on the edge, like Modbus, BACnet, and, uh, and other industrial protocols that have been around for decades. So uh, what we did, uh, we got involved uh, with the Edge Foundry project. That's a Linux Foundation uh, project that aims to solve the issues that we have on the edge. And uh, 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 it's uh, open source, uh, it wants to be, it, it is vendor neutral, and uh, its architecture is quite similar to the architecture of the, of the Mainflux. So it really fits well with what we do on the, on the cloud side, on the server side, with what we do with the Edgex Foundry on the edge side. Uh, Edgex Foundry is a, a set of uh, APIs, loosely coupled microservices, and uh, Edgex Foundry uh, has implemented those APIs using uh, Go language, so uh, Go programming language. So it, it, it's the same programming language that we use on the Mainflux side. 
you can also uh, deploy Edge Foundry using Docker containers. So the same way as you can deploy Mainflux. It's hardware and operating system agnostic. You can run uh, Edgex on uh, ARM or Intel, on, on Windows, Linux, Mac, even uh, real-time operating systems if you need. And uh, as I said, it's Linux Foundation project. It's Apache 2 license. The goal of the project is to uh, enable companies to quickly create edge solutions and uh, to integrate a different type of sensors uh, to be vendor, ne vendor neutral and, uh, and to help uh, uh, reduce time to market with using uh, Edgex Foundry. So, uh, in essence, when you take a look, uh, when we talk about the architecture of the Edgex Foundry, it's a set of uh, 10 plus microservices. Uh, initial implementation is in Go, but there are a few microservices that are developed in C. And the, the data flow is like uh, uh, on the bottom side, side you have uh, devices that are connecting to the system using many, one of the many protocols. And we have REST, OPC, UA, Modbus, BACnet, ZigBee, Bluetooth, Low Energy, MQTT, et cetera. And then those device services push the data to core services, and then core services push the data to distribution services. And distribution services then uh, can push the data out of the edge to uh, next year in your IoT platform or to cloud. Uh, you have management. Uh, and you have security also in the system. So uh, how would that work? If you have a thermometer that uh, records temperature and you, it, it would send the data using, uh, what is this, BACnet to the BACnet uh, device service, then device service would uh, do its part and push the data to the core data. Core data would push the data to distribution microservice and then you can uh, connect this dis distribution microservice to many different clouds like uh, Azure, AWS, Google, etc. But uh, and Mainflux, of course. Uh, however, distribution can also push data back to local analytics, and then this local analytics can do some processing on the edge. So, in case you lose internet connectivity, your edge would still be able to do some computing and do some decisions. Uh, independent of the internet connection. And if required, then the local analytics could issue a, com uh, a, e a command to a command microservice, which would then push that command to MQTT adapter and maybe let's stop machine because it's overheating. So in essence, that would be the data flow to the Ajax. And uh, this is as short as possible overview of uh, how Ajax would work on the edge. And uh, I'll let Drashko speak more about the integration between Edge and, uh, and the cloud if we did. Uh, thanks, Janko, for, for this uh, presentation of the Edgex Foundry. And so let's now take a look at the possible integration of uh, one system that has Mainflux in the cloud it has Mainflux on the edge as well, and, he, and it has Edgex Foundry running on another edge computer or IoT gateway. So we connected. So what, what are the, the scenarios that can actually ha happen when we talk about the, the device connectivity? From, just from the connectivity perspective, we can connect devices directly to the cloud, right? If we have some a little bit more powerful sensor, let's say um, <laughs> Wi-Fi connectivity on it, it can go directly through your home router or through some industrial router and connect directly to, to the application in the cloud. Uh, or you can connect, let's say, something that produces much more data, uh, a connected vehicle or, or some other machine. But what happens when you have uh, a devices that maybe don't don't have uh, the IP connectivity, a Bluetooth devices, Zigbee devices, and so on. You would like to to connect them first to the local gateway and then connect them to the cloud. There are many reasons why you need those edge computers. You need them for local connectivity. You need them to save the bandwidth because maybe you don't want to send everything on the cloud. You want to do some processing here, right, to save the save the bandwidth of what's between the edge and the cloud. 
you want to have a low latencies between some mission critical machines and the uh, decisions that are made on the edge processing. So there are many reasons why you would have things connected through the gateway. But when we are talking about the gateway here, we, we said that we can use the same system that we use in the cloud for the simplicity. But sometimes it's good also to, to put the Ajax foundry system as well because there are differences. And those differences are mostly in the device protocols and the way that we co can connect devices. So what will Mainflux as a initially cloud platform, but now looked more in this uh, unified IoT platform context, provide you on the edge? Well, uh, it will provide you those, all those characteristics that I mentioned before when I explained uh, what Mainflux has. So it has 509 certificates, mutual TLS. It has a very small footprint of uh, around five megabytes per microservice. Um, and, and so it will provide you also very uh, important feature of unification of your system, meaning that you will deploy the same code base uh, on both IoT gateways and in the cloud. And uh, for this to happen, we had to implement an, a small a daemon, a small IoT agent, an embedded software also written in Go, that runs on the gateway itself and basically is a bridge or a connector between a main flux running on the edge gateway and main flux running in the cloud. So that can, the two main fluxes can actually communicate between themselves. On the other hand, what would Ajax Foundry provide you on the gateway? All those great things that, that Janko mentioned. But also, uh, it will provide you, most importantly, a plethora of device services. And those are, th this is this layer here. So Mainflux was not so focused so far on implementing those device services, but Ajax is. The, the, one of their main activity is in building all those industrial protocol support, BACnet, OPC UA, Modbus, all those industrial protocols that are really used in the fact on the factory floor in the industry. And basically through the integration, if you if you if you put this system on your edge gateway, then you can connect a huge number of various different protocols, devices that are talking different protocols to your edge gateway, and then send data to a main flux in the cloud through these distribution services, as Janko mentioned. But when you do this kind of integrations, again, you will need some kind of IoT agent, a small microservice that is running on your gateway to enable this kind of communication on the control plane, not only on the data plane. OK, you can use this microservice to pump data out to the cloud. But how will you control your gateways? How will you manage thousands of gateways that you deployed? Well, you use this for, for this. In order, in order for this to happen, you have to have some kind of firmware that is only used for a control plane between the cloud and your gateway. And in Ajax, this is. Uh, the set of microservices here that are related to this uh, system management, but typically it's one microservice that is called SMA or system management agent. And in order for this system management agent to function correctly with the main flux cloud, we again can deploy the HD daemon, the same, the same one that I mentioned before, a, a small piece of firmware that we deploy on the gateway in order to have a connection with the with the cloud, with the main flux in the cloud on this control plane uh, layer. So what's missing today, but is coming very soon for the Ajax, is a, is a UI uh, so that you can actually have a nice user interface of the, all, all, the, all the systems that are running on your gateway. And typically, all those microservices in Ajax, as in main flux, run in Dockers. So you can actually deploy them with, with either Docker Compose or maybe Kubernetes, some Kubernetes variant. 
And basically, with this, with this integration explications, I, I would like to finish this talk because I would like to leave a few minutes for eventual questions, if you have one. Thank you very much. Yes, please, maybe, Yanko, you can. Thank you. So uh, in our project, we already have a, a device manage management system. So is there, uh, but we don't have uh, IoT facilities. So is there any way we can integrate with the main flux? Yes, and uh, the main flux itself provides, as I said, uh, the facilities for integration to, through event sourcing. It is very easy to use. So whatever happens in the system can be connected and, and sent as an event to other parts of the legacy, uh, legacy systems. And then uh, one other point of integration, if you need it, would be on the, on the very edge or on the gateway themselves. OK, thank you. Another question is that um, you mentioned uh, you use channel to uh, communicate with the device. So um, I suppose each device will have a channel, right? So uh, channel is an entity that you provision in the in the system that you configure in the system and it's up to you as a creator of the system to provision as many channels as you like so typically you can give maybe your device two channels or or 10 or hundreds it's it's because it's analogous to mqtt topic you can imagine that one device can be connected to many and mqtt and subscribe or publish to many MQTT topics. Mm -hmm. And analogous to this, your device can subscribe or publish to many Mainflux channels. That's the, that's the idea. And very often for the gateway, you would have, for example, two channels. One that you will use for the data, data plane, for, the communica for communicating data, maybe sending them to the cloud. And the other channel can be used, for example, for the control plane, where you would set some control messages over this channel to the gateway so that it can stop, start local services, give you back logs in the cloud, and so on. Uh, just to add a thing, uh, you can also have a single channel where multiple thermometers send the temperature. And then you have one channel where multiple devices send the pressure. And you will, uh, Mainflux has the notion of publisher of a device that sent the data. So you can have a single channel for the temperature, the other channel for pressure, uh, third channel for voltage, etc. So it's up to you to configure it the best way you need it. it. It's really flexible. And you can have multiple channels per device, single channel per device, multiple devices per channel. You can do it any way you need to do it. Okay. Thank you. I believe we have just one minute left. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so is. my question is that uh, your, your slides is uh, mainly focused on the technical. So uh, could you please tell, tell, tell us about uh, uh, are there any uh, customer reference case uh, with uh, your project? Yes, so I, I think I put it on, the, on, on the one of the slides, but uh, so far we saw uh, one big deployment with uh, one of the biggest retailers in USA, which is deploying a, a main flux practically in every store. So we are talking about 2,000 stores, and uh, then connecting those main fluxes in the, and managing them with another main flux instance in the geographically distributed cloud. So this is the scenario of unified IoT platform that I spoke about, to to which to to which we want to to go, to go to, yeah. So this is one example. The other example is one big company in the domain of oil and gas that is, that is using Mainflux in uh, managing a lot of gateways as well. The gateways are not uh, uh, a Mainflux gateways yet, but they, they, they have their proprietary software, but they have some pieces of the software that is necessary to communicate with Mainflux on the uh, control plane, the edge, the IoT agent that I mentioned. So this is this is another, let's say, use case or business case. And then there we saw the, we saw main flux applied in smart buildings. Uh, 
smart offices as well, so for to control a lot of uh, uh, sensors that would be connected either directly through two main flux in the cloud or through some kind of gateway. And did I miss something? No, uh, we're out of time. We can take the topic uh, yes. offline. Uh, one more thing. With uh, Mainflux Edge D, you don't need to have VPN to your gateway anymore because this Edge D enables bidirectional secure communication. So you don't have to manage uh, virtual networks anymore. You just put the daemon on your gateway and you take it uh, in the field, connect it, and it's going to be fine and secure. And we have just a single port that is using, used for all the communication. So attack foot, footprint from the outside is as, as small as possible. Thank okay, you. Okay, so th thank we'll you hear. very much. We have uh, to stop the, the yes, conversation but here. Please but